This is author and speaker Tori Lynn, and I'm going to have a vulnerable moment and try not to cry in front of those kids out there. Um, the reason I stopped promoting Taboo is because I went through a depression moment. I didn't talk about it. I looked normal to you guys, but I was really fighting a lot of depression. Um, I, what I didn't count the cost of is going to a different city and not counting the cost of being a single mother and not, um, I'm a single mother and I believe in my children. And so when I moved to Atlanta, mm -hmm. I, um, I didn't count the cost of not knowing who would watch my kids when I go to work. Um, who would watch my kids as a hairstylist and working on Saturdays. Hey, Tony. Um, I just didn't count a lot of the things that I should have thought about. I believe in the kids and I just thought, you know, I want to go ahead and, and get my kids discovered. And that was my focus. And, um, That's why, that's why white people don't want us out here. Um, and so that's what I was, so anyway, so now what I'm going to do is just talk about depression. So I stopped promoting taboos because I started going through depression. Because I was in Atlanta and I was in a homeless shelter. With my two kids. And what I didn't realize um, is that what I was doing to my children, um, I'm sorry, y'all, let me let the windows up. Somebody looking for their child. I didn't know what I was doing to my kids. And uh, though they, they're very strong kids, and I've taught them to be very strong, and that's just part of being... Um, African American female is just being strong and they're okay you know you kind of make it look like a um, slumber party <laughs> if you will so after a while I realized I was uh, drowning in it I was drowning and so when I started doing taboo I thought I was coming up and I was getting better. That lady right over there, we, she needs us to um, help her um, get her two little boys over there. So, so can we go get them? Out of where? Huh? Behind yeah. that building? No, ma'am. She can get out of her car and go and get her kids from, her kids from behind that building. You know you're on live, right? Go on somewhere, I'm on live. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so that's what what happened that's why i stopped promoting taboo is because i went through a depression and um and sometimes you don't know that you're in depression and a lot of things that can cause people to go into depression is um sometimes a lot of times there's a chemical imbalance you know you got people that went through it with their children their families and their mothers or whatever like that and that and that's a great possibility also there's just things sometimes that could just cause us to go go through it because of a decision that we made again i didn't count the cost of going to a new city with my two children and being a single mother i didn't count the cost of that um another thing what happened is that when i started doing taboo and y'all know a lot of y'all know how excited i was with doing taboo and um and i was on my favorite subject which is uh sex but also it wasn't just about sex it was really about more about intimacy so when you're talking about um Sex is an, a very intimate subject. It's a thing that people, you know, if people are, are doing it or people are, are nymphos or, or whatever, but it really is an intimate thing. It's a really intimate moment with people or with your person or the person that you love. Um, so I was excited about it. Well, I allowed, a, um, there's a book club that had said they wanted to review my book. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Oliver. Uh, there was a book club that wanted to do my book. So, cool. I was excited about that. Well, 
when they did the book out of six women there was there was one that was like totally disappointed I mean, she was just like, you know, I thought your book was going to be this. I thought your book was going to do that. And I thought this and that. And she just really just gave me the business about this book. And um, so I said, you know, she was like, it's, it was all over the place. There was no storyline. And there was, there was um, you know, unity. And then when you did the, um, the how-to part, or, you know, I know all that kind of stuff. I mean, it was just really bad. So I said, if you don't mind, turn to page six. And I described in the book that this was a collection of stories. There is no storyline. I went to a collection of stories. Some of the stories about how I, how my sexual addiction has started. I talked about how others have started. I talked about others' testimony and stuff like that. So it wasn't just one story thing. I talked about being molested. I talked about, um, you know, some things that could cause a woman to be turned off of her man. You know, like if, if she doesn't want to have sex with him no more then this might be the reason why. So it wasn't just all about porn. I'm not a porn star. That's not me. Um, but now, so when I told her to turn to page six, and I'm like, okay, this is this says it is a collection of stories and, and polls and stuff like that. I don't know if you guys remember that I went on Facebook at some point and I was talking about the polls. I was like, you know, what's one of the number one needs from a man? You know, what do men need or whatever like that. So I was doing all that kind of stuff. Okay. So now, this is one of the things. So I allowed the opinion of one woman of six to bring me down. Well, I don't know if it was just that much or it was the fact that I was already down. I was already going through. I was already mentally going through stuff, something. So it only took her opinion to make me want to not do the book anymore. Make me not believe in my gift. So, all right, hold on. That lady's opinions did not change my gift. I allowed it to. I'm on live. Go on. Why are you crying though? Go somewhere. I'm trying to put this. Anyway, Bye. that lady's opinion. I allowed somebody's opinion to change how I thought about me. And uh, that was the same thing that happened with David's daughter, who her brother, I forgot his name. If somebody remember the name, let me know. But whose brother asked her to come and cook for him and take care of him, and he ended up raping her. But before then, she was still uh, a princess. She was still, she still had a gift. She was still deserving of the rope that she wore. And she took it off because her brother had raped her. And now she didn't feel worthy anymore. Okay, that's what happened to me. And so I allowed one person's opinion of me to change the way I felt about my gift and my book. So now, moving forward. So that was another thing. So not only am I moving around in Atlanta, I'm not feeling, you know, too good about what was going on, but that was another thing. So now it's just, now it's piling up and I don't know if a lot of you, a lot of you bring, bring a lot of you, um, have read the divorce. Well, if you read the divorce, you know, the hell I went through and I talked about it and I spoke about it and I was very, very transparent in that book. So if I wasn't able to come back from going through the, oh, that's another thing. I allowed somebody else, this is another thing that happened, which contributed to depression. I allowed someone to tell me, Tori, every people go through divorces all the time. You know, people go through divorces all the time. Why haven't you recovered from this? And I actually felt bad, like, man, something's really wrong with me where I'm not able to, where I haven't bounced back yet. Well, I finally talked to a therapist about this, which black people are sleeping. Thank you, uh, Fred. Some black people are sleeping on therapy. Therapy does not make you a weak person. It actually makes you strong because now you're, 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 you're knowing that something's going on and I need help. 
um so what happened was i went to the um hold on what was i talking about shoot oh so when the lady told me that people go through divorces all the time you know snap out of it well anyway like i said i just thought man something's wrong with me where people do go through divorces all the time why am i still you know why am i still in pain through this well hey hey corinth so what happened with me and this is what a, th a therapist helped me understand she said tori people do go through divorces all the time and they come out people do go and have a baby and then they come out uh people do go through losing their house and, and, and come out people lose their car and they come out people lose through go through their mother or father having an ill a terminal illness and they come out or people do come through the part where um they lose their business and they come out. They lose their credit and they come out. You know, they spouse or anything, call the police and make everything go public. They come out. But people don't go through a, a loss of their house and their cars and their other house and go through postpartum depression because they just had a baby. And then their husband is taking them to court. And then their husband try to take take a custody of the children, take the children away from you. And then your mother get terminally ill. And then you lose your, um, your, your, uh. My your bit. So what I'm saying, my point for saying that is that I was going through a lot. So I allowed this opinion of this woman to really just kind of make me think, make me question myself. And it was the it, her walk was a whole different walk. It was a different walk. Where Sham said it takes an inner strength to get therapy. Most people don't have the courage. Yes. So it was a different walk. Everybody's not walking the same walk. So we can't allow everybody to just decide. You know to throw their opinions on you or, or, you know, uh, their opinions don't matter. And now that's as, as at 41 years old, I'm starting, it's starting to feel better. Cause now I'm understanding. Okay. Like, you know, that your opinion is your problem. That, that, that has nothing to do with me. And, but it took me a minute to get there. So for eight years between going through the divorce and losing my houses and my car and my credit and, 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 and baby daddy, you know, going through the, 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 the battle is still out. I just haven't released it yet because it was some stuff in there that was kind of personal. I just thought, I don't know if I want to do that to my children, but Tony Hall says, I can't wait for you to come to Milwaukee and be a speaker at the men retreat. I'm coordinating. I love, Oh, Yes, Tony, let me know. Um, because I'm gonna get back in it, but as you see, I have stopped I stopped speaking, I stopped talking about everything. If you go to Author Tori Lynn, that page that I have that's on there, I got a lot of videos that I was doing and I stopped everything. So um my thing is it's a lot of reasons why people go through depression. It's a lot of people sometimes we don't we think we're going through it all all alone. And sometimes it's embarrassing. Like I said, I was embarrassed to think, man, I'm still just kind of I'm still going through this stuff. Well, actually Somebody helped me had to help me understand. No, you went through a lot of stuff. It wasn't just that one thing or just that two things. It was about seven things that caused it to just like really go in there. And then if you don't have a support group, that's very important to have a support group. Talk to people that's been through that stuff before and made it out. If you've been been married before and divorced, then you know what it's like to go through a marriage and divorce. You know what that do to you mentally. You know it. So don't go and judge somebody and then be that voice of reason. Like, you know, if you said, you know, if somebody or they're showing signs of depression or showing signs of stuff. I used to have a Land Rover. You could eat off my floor. I'm honest. You could eat off the floor. It's. When I started going through all this, you couldn't find stuff on the floor. It was embarrassing. I wanted to park way in the back because it was just like, first of all, we were we were homeless. So our bags were in the car, pillows was in the car, you know, food. We had food. I had crates of food in the car. I mean, it was just like, you know, it was a lot. So now if I drive up and see someone got stuff in their car, I might think they might be going through something, you know, instead of just thinking, what the hell is all of that? You know, it's just like... You know, it's a lot. And then for me to, let's see, your storm is preparing you for your testimony. Thank you, Jesus. Um, Tony Hall, I did the same. God was my back. Jack, Jackie Phillips says, uh, my baby girl, I'm with you. I went through it like you. God saved me. He'll, he'll save you. He put people in your life. Yes. Allow people to come in your life. Allow people, because sometimes, again, it is embarrassing to admit i'm going through something it's embarrassing i'm having hot flash y'all i'm sorry to let this window back down it's a lot 
to say I'm going through something, I've been through something, and I don't even know how to come back out of it. And you're embarrassed, and sometimes you don't even want to know. You don't even want to know. I, know you, I mean, a lot of people say, Tori, I didn't know you was going through that. You probably saying the same thing. I didn't know you was going through that. Yes. Yes. I, I, I was. And I'm still coming out of it. But that's where I lost my confidence. Not even in myself, but even in my God. I'm being real. Because you're like, man, I just screwed up so bad that, like, God, did I push myself way at the back of the line? Um... You know, my pastor today, he said he was talking on Habakkuk 2 and 2, write the vision and make it plain. And now I got to go back and get a vision board so I can keep my vision. So I don't allow the enemy to come back and say, you know what, you remember you, remember you screwed up, right? You know, you know you screwed up, right? Um, it's just a lot that that depression can cause. It's a lot. Thank you, Mark Williams. <laughs> um, it's a lot. And what I have to say to other people, as I say to myself, is that we have to... Um, we have to um, allow people to be there for us. But we have to be transparent enough to say, man, I'm going through something. You can't tell everybody that. The Bible says we can't throw our pearls amongst one, so we can't tell everybody that, but at the same time... Okay. Um, you can't tell everybody your business. Everybody's not for you. And that's sad to say. Because as Christians, it's we're we're getting a bad name for gossip, backstabbing. We got to do better. I will, we got to do better. We have to make sure that we allow people to know that we're hurt. And I am going to get back on Taboo, but I'm letting you guys know why I have stopped promoting Taboo. And I will start back doing my videos, my weekly videos. You know, be patient with me or at least send me a message. Because I have some people like Justin Tate. He will say to me, Tori, I haven't seen you put no videos up in a while. Um, there's a guy in Oklahoma City. He don't even know if I'm going to shout him out, but his name is Weldon Sharp. And he had fell out of a tree when he was trimming his trees he fell out of it and broke his collarbone and he called me it's like why haven't you called me why haven't you called me and i said you know i didn't want to tell him hey look i've i've, I've been mentally going through some stuff I, I i just couldn't call nobody and uh so finally he said now that you're in memphis tennessee and i'm gonna go back to atlanta but i did have to just just stop for a second and get around family get around some people that you know i had to just i had to do a restart and i'll and i'll talk about that later how i ended up being able to trust again but um he said what are you going to do and i said well i think i'm just going to get my license transferred here you know my, my hair license and he said you have a gift he said man you can speak and people listen and that was a blessing to hear somebody say that because sometimes you need somebody to go back and remind you of who you are or your gift and we know that God is always there. Of course, you know, hold on, let me, uh, I can't do that while I'm on the video. Hold on right quick. We know God is here. But sometimes we need mm -hmm. other people to remind us, you know, of who we are as well. Because God has not moved. He's not changed. Um, but anyway, that is the reason I stopped taboo and again i'm gonna start back doing uh i'm sorry y'all hold on that's the reason i stopped doing taboo is because i had lost my confidence i did i allowed one person and it's it's probably a couple i mean everybody don't everybody didn't like the divorce i had a lot of people that love the divorce but that's just that's just part of it Everybody's not going to like you. Everybody's not going to support you. Everybody's not going to, you know. So, um, but like I said, when you're already going through something, at least the little bit somebody says to you just kind of could just drive you on in. So, um, I will start back doing them every week. Because uh, believe me, I got a lot of stuff up in here. I got the journey coming, which is about mental health. Because I'm going to go in. Y'all know how, if you, if you read the divorce, I'm very transparent. 
if you read Taboo, when I talked about messing with a married man, I'm very transparent. I talked about how my sexual addiction started. I'm very transparent. So, I'm going to get back in it. If you don't think that you can handle what I say, you might not want to you might not want to be on Arthur Tory Lynn page. Because some of the things I might say on Arthur Tory Lynn page, I won't say on Tory Lynn's page. Um, anyway, anything that anybody might want to say to me, and I had uh, some other things I'm going to say, but I'm going to wait till another video because now this video is getting longer. And now I'm, I'm, I need to blow my nose. <laughs> All right. This is um, Arthur Tory Lynn. I will see you online, authortorylynn.com. And um, if you have anything you need to say, just inbox me. It keeps saying put them on camera, but I don't know what that means. So I'm going to have to ask somebody what does it mean to put somebody on camera. Um, but I'll see you next week. I don't know which day I'm going to start doing these on. They might be every Tuesday again, or I don't know yet. But um, I am going to get back into the speaking. I am going to get back into the, to the taboo. And uh, one of the biggest compliments I got from the lady that was just really just going in about taboo that was telling me how disappointed she was. She really said, you, you are well researched. You know a lot about the Bible and things that I didn't know about the Bible. And she said, so you really know your stuff. So at least I got one compliment out of her. <laughs> so anyway, authortorylynn.com. I'll see you online. Um, leave your comments below and let me know, you know, if there's something that you want to talk about or anything like that. Believe me. I'm an open book. I'm not sure why God allowed me to be transparent like this, but yeah, that's what he did. All right. I'll see you online. Bye-bye. What is it?